New pitcher in the circle for Indian Hills as we get started in the third inning. Dwayne Cook back within the U.S. Bank broadcast booth at R.L. Hellyer Field. Our first of two this afternoon, early evening between Indian Hills and Rock Valley Softball. Ryan Cheek into the circle for Coach Dial, thus ending the day, here at least in game one, for Maddie Huseman. Take you through her final stat line in just a moment. She's got Bella Cromaldi at the dish to open things up in her relief appearance. Blows a fastball by her there. It's 0-2 quickly on the Rock Valley third baseman. Cromaldi reaching on an error by starting pitcher Maddie Huseman. Had one go off her leg and kept that first inning going. The second oopsie by the Warrior defense. It's a softly hit ground ball. Mahaffey up with it and a good strong throw to Anderson for out number one. Allison Bratazic walked her first time up. Number 25 in blue here this afternoon. For Huseman, she makes it through two innings, ended up allowing four hits total, walked two batters, plunked one, struck out two. And of the three runs that scored, well, speaking of plunked, Bratazic will wear that one as she trots down to first. Of the three runs that ended up scoring for Rock Valley, I believe that two of them, or one of them was earned, right, Ricky? One. All right. That's why we keep Ricky around. Appreciate you. Rattazic getting checked on at the first base bag. Seems to be all right. That'll bring up Katie Hayes. Hayes ended that first inning at the plate for the Golden Eagles with a softly hit ground ball to Anderson over there at first. Want to thank you all for being with us here on Go Hills TV, powered by JBS, bringing more to the table. Ground ball right side, and that's out of play from Hayes. 0-1. Rutazic on the base paths, not much of a threat to run, has not attempted a stolen base on the year, has scored 23 runs for the Golden Eagles, though. A team that averages about 11 per game, which is the most in Division Three. The 0-1. Nice rise ball from Cheek and unable to catch up with it. Hayes as she's in the hole 0-2. This Rock Valley team is, I know, Division Three, so playing up a couple of, couple of divisions here against the Warriors, but nonetheless, seven-time defending national champions. And Hayes absolutely went through on that swing for the first strike out of the game for Ryan Cheek, freshman out of Eldridge, Iowa, her 63rd of the season. Two away, and Madison Carlson will get to face another one of her opposing pitchers here this evening. Ground ball off her foot. That'll be a foul ball. And she'll walk that one off before stepping back in the box. For Cheek, we saw her yesterday in game two against Marshalltown. Got the start against the Tigers there. Worked three innings, allowed just one hit, had an earned run. Struck out four, walked three Tigers. On the season, that dropped the ERA to 281. This is her 19th appearance, which is the most of any Warrior pitcher. Blows that one by Carlson, and it's 0-2. 47 and a third innings, 39 hits, 27 runs, 19 earned, and now 63 strikeouts to just 20 walks. Good 3-to-1 ratio there. And a 6-1 and one record. The 0-2 popped up out of play. We'll reset and do it again. Top of the order and Caitlin Steffick awaiting on deck, but... Ryan Cheek hoping to make sure that we don't have to see her until the fourth. We're in the top of the third with the Golden Eagles out in front, 3-0. The 0-2. Almost broke it back in there, but it stayed just a bit up above the letters, 1-2 and two on Carlson. Cheek, freshman out of Eldridge, Iowa, North Scott High School. The 1-2. Again, jammed her there, but Carlson able to fight it off to the screen to stay alive at one and two. Struck out looking against Huseman back in her first at bat to open the top of the second. That was one of two punch outs by Maddie, who's currently hoping for some support at the plate because she would be in line for the loss. This one is hit well out to right center field. Roberts, what a grab! Full extension. Yana Roberts able to reel that one in. That had extra bases and possibly another run on the board written all over it. But my goodness, we've got to take another look at that one on the River Community Credit Union Instant Replay. 
Really well hit off the bat, kept tailing away from her, but man, what a grab by Roberts. And that will end the top of the third. Maybe that'll get a little juice, a little life into the Warrior dugout. We'll find out when we head to the home half of the third right after this on Go Hills TV. Well, wouldn't you know it, after making a SC Top 10 play out in right center field, Yana Roberts will lead things off here in the home half of the third inning. 9-1-2, and two, due up for the Warriors. She was getting a little bit of attention there before we brought you back from break on Go Hills TV, powered by JBS. And not surprising, it seemed like she might have had a little bit of an extension on that shoulder there. That's what they were taking a look at, but she's all right, smiling, waving off Coach Dial and the trainer on that. Let's see if she can get the bats going here for the maroon and gold. Roberts will face Carlson in for her third inning of work in the circle. And gets a call and strike on the outer black, 0-1. Roberts batting 355, the product out of Davenport North High School. Yesterday, two for six with five runs scored in that doubleheader against Marshalltown. Here's the 0-1. Squares around a bind, but off the bottom part of the bat and under the Legs of Katie Hayes, the catcher. She'll be behind 0-2. Carlson with two strikeouts for Rock Valley. Here through his first, her first two-plus innings of work now. A couple of walks, though, mixed in there with them, too. But a big goose egg in the hits department. Of course, the one that really matters, the runs column here for Indian Hills. The 0-2 to Roberts. That one way low and outside, a waste pitch, trying to get her to chase. Roberts keeps the bat back. Of course, with Yana's speed, that's also a great player to have on the base paths to set the table for the top of the lineup as well. Got to get there first. The one-two off speed. Good job by Roberts waiting on that one. Especially not stepping out of the batter's box, too. As you can see, she was wanting to come forward with that slap style. Stays alive at one and two. Three runs on four hits, no errors by the Golden Eagles thus far here through our first three innings for them at the plate. No runs, no hits, two errors by the Warrior defense. One, two, and once more, Roberts stays alive. Fouling that one off to the screen. For those of you just joining us here on this Friday evening, our first of two between Indian Hills and Rock Valley, I'm Dwayne Cook filling in for Russ W. Oker. Glad to have you with us in the U.S. Bank broadcast booth, wherever you might be watching with us here today. A great non-conference matchup. And from what we believe, anyway, this is the first regular season meeting between these two in program histories. Two and two as that one's low to Roberts. They actually did have an exhibition against one another this past fall, and it was Rock Valley who got the better of that contest. It always means a little more when the lights are brighter. Two-two, and Roberts able to foul it off. That should do a little bit of a hop, skip, and a jump over it there. But just like we saw with Mahaffey, remember back in the bottom of the second, a productive at bat here from the nine-hole hitter for the Warriors. Mahaffey fouled off several pitches from Carlson, worked it full, and ended up walking, got herself into scoring position too with a stolen base, but got stranded there to end the home half of the second. Here's another 2-2 from Carlson. This one out towards left, curving foul, and it will get down as giving chase from her left field spot was Ritazic, unable to get to it. Now, I noted that Rock Valley is a little undermanned here this afternoon. Kelly Riordan, who is a All-American from last year and going to go play D1 ball at IUPUI next season, out due to an injury. Normally the starting shortstop and a Golden Eagle who hits over 500. The 2-2, two -two, and she is able to let that one go low and keep the bat back, 3-2. and two. So Roberts works it full. Warriors have yet to have their leadoff batter reach here in the ballgame in this bottom of the third. Here comes the 3-2 from Carlson. Ground ball, that gets past George. It's short, and again, a great at bat by a Warrior as Yana Roberts will reach base with the first hit of the ball game for the Bruin and Gold, and here comes Destiny Danger Lewis, as Russ W. Oker likes to call her. Destiny, well, what can you say? 
The stats really say it all. 590 coming into today. That's third in all of D1. 73 runs scored. That's fourth in the division. 22 doubles, tied for second. 23 homers, tied for third. 68 RBI. She now sits third in the season home run totals for Indian Hill softball all time. Tied for eighth in doubles with those 22, and currently with her batting average, she would be at the top of the leaderboard there. Pops it up, and it will just get out of play to the bleachers as Hayes gave it a look from her catcher spot to start Lewis off 0-1. So depending on how the next, hopefully, quite a few games for the Warrior softball team goes, Lewis could potentially set not just one, but perhaps a couple of Warrior records in a single season. Grounded out to third or first time up against Carlson. The 0-1 swing and a miss. Went off speed on the outer part of the plate, and Lewis a little bit too far out in front. Well, we saw Roberts get down to two strikes and then battle her way back to putting a single right back up the middle where it came from. She stands on first. Yana does have 12 stolen bases on the season. But has stayed put to this point in the at-bat as Lewis and Coach Dial shared a brief discussion before we continue. Destiny 8 for 10 set, speaking of records, a game record yesterday in game two against the Tigers with nine RBI. She had 12 total yesterday between the two. The 0-2, way outside, another waste pitch from Carlson. One and two the count on the Warrior third baseman. Destiny coming to Atumwa by way of Indianola High School, former Indianola Warrior, so that's in her blood. The one-two. Hit out to center field. Hit pretty darn well. Still going back and watching it fly is the center fielder, Caitlin Stefik. Home run 24 for Destiny Lewis. She'll touch them all right behind her teammate, Yana Roberts. And once more, Warrior fans, Lewis and Anderson tied with 24 dingers on the year for the maroon and gold. Just raw power out to center field. Deposited it right over to the left of that 2-10 sign. I thought Jimmy might get one out there on the forklift. Our very own Jimmy out the second, manning our center field camera for you. But she kept it left of there. All that matters is it got over the top of that black chain link out there. 3-2. Indian Hills breaks through against Carlson. Now let's see what the middle of the order can do, if they can keep this rally going. All started with the web gym out in center field by Yana Roberts. Let's see what Abby Cataldo does here. This one missing high and in to start the A-B. 1-0 to Abby. Struck out her first time up against Carlson. Abby is just 10th strikeout of the year at the plate. That one called a strike. Inner part of the plate at the knees, one and one. Well, they don't call her danger for no reason. Destiny Lewis proving why she's earned that nickname from our very own Russ W. Oker. Two run homer to center. The one one. Cataldo takes strike two out her plate. Well, Roberts was able to get on base for Lewis. Can Cataldo battle back here and get on the base paths for the also dangerous in her own right, Sidney Anderson, high and out, two and two. Anderson waiting on deck. So now both Lewis and Anderson tie with Macy Harrington for the second most home runs in a single season by a Warrior softball player at 24. 2-2, Cataldo with a check swing, fouls it out of play. We'll reset and do it again. This is exactly what we saw from Rock Valley back in the first and second innings is being able to knock Huseman out of the game by keeping at bats alive, fouling pitches off, making her go through her entire repertoire. See what Cataldo has with 2-2. And fouled it off her foot. That one certainly doesn't feel too good, and she'll... 
Try to shake that one off. Looks like she's all right. Coach Dial checking in on her right fielder. Well, it takes an army, as you know, for us to bring these broadcasts to you here on Go Hills TV. As I mentioned a couple times, we got Jimmy Ott the second out there in center field, bringing you the shot right down to the batter's eye. Behind the plate, it's our friend Camden taking care of that angle for you. And then running the show is Titus. I think people, people, more people know who Titus is than they know who I am, that's for sure. The 2-2 two -two as, or I beg your pardon, as Cataldo is going to try to jog it out down the left field line and hopefully resume her at-bat here. It's been a battle against Carlson, and the Warriors have done that now the last couple of innings. Iana Roberts first here this inning, Mahaffey. Of course, really had the first productive at bat against Carlson, I would say, in the second, resulting in a walk at the time. Looks like she's all right, so Abby's going to dig in with that 2-2. Ground ball, gloved by Carlson, reaching over to her right, able to stab it and toss it over to first for out number one. That's pretty good reaction time right there by Carlson. Not much you can do on that one. Cataldo retired. And here comes Sydney Anderson. We watched yesterday her and Lewis duke it out for who would end the day with the team lead in homers. She just had her teammate tire at 24. Now, what's Sydney got in store? That one's out, 1 0. Anderson walked on five pitches her first time up against Carlson. Right hander didn't really give her much to swing at. See how careful she is here after that long ball to Lewis. The 1 0. Went fanned through one on that outer part of the plate. One and one the count. Carlson, by the way, that homer from Lewis, just her third home run allowed of the season. I mentioned that is not something this Rock Valley pitching staff has done a lot of this year. A total of 11 dingers have been given up by the Golden Eagle Arms. Low and outside, two and one. Seventy RBI now on the year two, by the way, for Destiny Lewis with that two run blast to center. Two and one to Anderson. Ground ball over to her head coach Lindsay Dial at the third base box. Foul, make it two and two. She represents the three spot in the lineup for the Maroon and Gold. Only one away here in the bottom half of the third inning. Warriors have brought home two off the bat of Destiny Lewis. To cut this back down to a one-run ball game. 2-2 two -two to Anderson. That's outside, 3-2. and two. The Rock Valley dugout wanted the call, but it clearly seemed out. Anderson has only struck out nine times this year versus 19 walks. Really great eye at the plate. The 3-2. Hit out towards right field. That one's got some carry. That one's gone. Sydney Anderson recaptures the team lead in homers. 25 of them on the year. Touch them all, 22. I see you. We've got a brand new ball game. Well, they don't call them the Bash Sisters for nothing. Destiny Lewis, Sydney Anderson leave the park. 98 homers on the year for Indian Hills. My goodness. Madison Carlson gave up two home runs all season long. She's given up two here in the third inning. Brianna Newton takes a strike at the knees on the outer part of the plate. 0-1 in her second look at Carlson. Struck out swinging her first time up back to end the bottom half of the first. Oh one one off speed, didn't make it all the way to the plate, 1-1. One one. I just... You run out of superlatives on what to say when it comes to 7 and 22. Just 
I know Coach Dial and I know the Warrior Faithful are all glad to have them in maroon and gold. There's no doubt about that. One and one, low and outside to make it two and one on Newton. And Bree sits third on the team with 11 homers on the year. It's just overshadowed, overshadowed, I beg your pardon, by the numbers that Lewis and Anderson are putting up. That one misses down inside. It's three and one on Newton. Carlson. Appears to be a little bit rattled after giving up those two long balls. It appeared a little bit after the one to Lewis, but able to make a really nice defensive play to get her mindset back and field her position. But after that one from Anderson, three and one on Newton. Chopper off the glove. That's a fair ball as Cromaldi cannot come up with it. Newton's going to get on her horse as having to go all the way over is the left fielder and not the throw not there in time from Ritazic. I'm thinking double for Newton. That would have been a really tough play for Cromaldi to make. How about 22 now on the year for Bree? That ties her with Lewis with a team high, and that will bring Darren Monroe out to the circle to chat with his infield and his pitcher. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back on Go Hills TV. Three all here in Ottumwa. Indian Hills with a three spot here in the bottom of the third inning. And looking to add some more to the board after the – Conversation in the circle with head coach Darren Monroe of Rock Valley and his infield. Kennedy Preston digs in, starts off with a 1-0 count against Carlson, who remains in the ball game. Three extra base hits here in the half inning, highlighted, of course, by the two home runs, one from Destiny Lewis and one from Sidney Anderson. 1-0 is called a strike at the knees, inner part of the plate, 1-1. One one. Preston flew out, actually lined out would be a better Way to put it to Cromaldi at third. Actually got robbed on it as Cromaldi was able to climb the ladder and bring it down at the hot corner. The 1-1 one, one from Carlson. Popped up out of play by Preston back our way. And it's 1-2. and two. Kennedy with 35 RBI on the year. It's tough to record those ribbies whenever you got some heavy hitters in front of you with Anderson and Lewis, Newton too, racking them all up. One, two, off speed, waited on it and able to get it through that five, six hole. Holding up at third is Newton as Ritazic gets it back into the infield quickly. The Warriors keep on hitting. That's what Coach Dial wanted to see. Came into the half inning without a base hit on their stat column. But now all of a sudden with five of them and still just one out and runners at the corners for Alex Beard. Beard grounded back to Carlson her first time up as well. Alex with 22 RBI on the year. And a chance to give the Warriors the lead after falling behind 3-0. Outside. Start ahead in the at-bat. With Preston over at first, by the way, she just has two, I beg your pardon, yes, two stolen bases on the season. The 1-0. Ripped out to right field on a line. I don't think it has the height. It's going to be off the wall. That'll score at least one, and holding up at third will be Kennedy Preston, who saw that was getting over the head of the right fielder out there. Freiburg and the Warriors just keep on swinging. 4-3. Indian Hills takes the lead against Rock Valley. Good piece of hitting by Beard. Has to hold up at first with how quickly that ball got out there and bounced right back to the outfielder in right field. What a response from the Maroon and Gold. They've put together four straight hits now off of Carlson and really... Everything they've touched this half inning has been really well hit. Even the ground ball back to Carlson from Cataldo was well struck. Now Mahaffey. Lefty puts it on the ground, and that'll be close. She beat it out. She sure did. The diving effort from Camaldi at third couldn't come up with it. George at short. Rifled it across the diamond, but Mahaffey speed too much to catch up with, and the bases will be loaded for the hammer. Hart. 
Greta stepped up with a runner in scoring position her first time. However, flew out to the second baseman for the Golden Eagles, Jenna Turner. Chance to make amends, though, here. And she sure came through with the bases loaded yesterday against Marshalltown. She'll start off with a strike out or part of the plate from Carlson, 0-1. Greta yesterday, as I noted, with those nine RBIs, she cleared the bases twice between game one and game two with an RBI double in both, three RBI double in both, I should say. The 0-1, upstairs, one and one. Well, we said it there at the end of the top half of this inning. Maybe that defensive play from Yana Roberts out in right center would breathe a little life into the dugout for Indian Hills, and boy, has it. The 1-1. One, one. That's called a strike, and Hearts will be behind 1-2. and two. Carlson has gotten ahead of three Warrior batters here this half inning. But it's been great approaches by Yana Roberts. Destiny Lewis had two strikes when she hit that two-run homer. Anderson had two strikes when she homered. The 1-2. Hearts fans through it for out number two. Greta's 20th strikeout of the year. We'll have a pinch hitter in the box with Maddie Findlay digging in. She had herself quite a day as well yesterday in a fill-in role. The second-year freshman out of Knoxville High School. Went three for three, a couple of runs scored, four RBI, and... Hit her fourth home run of the year in game two. Bases loaded situation for her here. Two away, bottom half of the third inning. Warriors have already struck for four. Can they add a few more? Pops it up. Shallow left field coming on is Ratazig almost gets run into by Steffig but she will make the catch on the palm of the glove Finley came up swinging but goes down on the F7 in the book but not before the Warriors have seven hits no Rock Valley errors they do leave the bags full but four runs in they lead it by one heading to the top of the fourth when we return <laughs> 